I got a call to remove bees from one of the weirdest places I've ever been asked to remove bees from before. This toilet. The bees had been living in the tank of this toilet for years, and they were using the small holes in the back of the toilet as their hive entrance. These holes were easy for the bees to defend, and they sealed up any other spaces around the tank with propolis. Propolis is pretty much bee glue, so it took a bit of prying and patience, but I loosened the lid and I lifted it up to reveal a happy and healthy colony of honeybees. I gently set the lid on the bees' new hive. Then, I took a moment to marvel at what the bees had created. Here was my view. You can see the hive is full of honey, and there was also pollen and a ton of brood. And the bees had used every bit of space they had in the tank. Then it was time to get to work removing comb. I started by removing the outermost pieces of comb. The comb fit almost perfectly into my wooden frames. You'll see how the frame is almost the same size as the tank of the toilet. Traditional beehives like the one I'm using here were designed to replicate an environment that bees like to build in. If you compare the beehive I have on the ground to the tank of the toilet, you can begin to understand why the bees chose to live here. It's a small space, it's protected from the elements, it's well insulated, and those small entrances we saw on the back are the perfect size so that bees can enter and exit and easily defend. As I worked my way removing each piece of comb from the toilet, I took a second to examine the comb and do a quick check for the queen. Then I put the pieces of comb into the wooden frames of the new hive using rubber bands. The bees will attach the comb to the frame and chew through the rubber bands to remove them from their hive. This is because bees are so clean and they use their space so efficiently Anything they don't need in the hive gets removed. All of this comb from the toilet will go into the new hive with the bees. The bees have worked hard to collect these resources and I want everything they had in their old home to move with them into their new home. This includes all of their food, so all of the honey, nectar, and pollen in the hive, and also all of the baby bees that have not yet emerged from their cells. Seeing so much brood in the hive is always a good sign that the colony has a healthy queen. But I also saw tiny bee eggs in some of the cells, which is a sure sign that the colony had a queen laying eggs within the past three days. This is because it takes three days for the eggs to hatch into larvae. Here you can see a close-up shot of what the brood looked like inside the tank of the toilet. This piece of comb also had bee eggs, larvae, pollen, and honey. I was about halfway done at this point, but I still had not yet seen the queen. The bees were not really leaving the tank of the toilet, so this told me that the queen was probably still in the toilet. Each piece of comb I took out had more bees and was full of capped cells of baby bees. This told me that I was probably right in the hive's brood nest. Since it's the queen's job to lay eggs for the colony, there's always a strong chance that you'll spot the queen in this area of the hive. And you might notice that I have my queen clip at the ready. It's that little plastic thing hanging off the front of my shirt. It's a very important tool for beekeepers, and during a removal I have a queen clip on me at all times. I like to keep it clipped to the right side of my shirt since I'm right-handed, and I always try to keep it in the same spot on my shirt so that I can grab it without looking or without fumbling as soon as I spot the queen. I kept slowly and carefully working my way through the tank of the toilet. People always wonder how I can stay so calm while working with bees, but really the only way you can be when you approach a colony of wild bees is to be calm and to move with care. These bees were not stinging me at all, which told me that they didn't feel threatened by me. So I chose not to wear my protective equipment for this removal as I felt perfectly safe around the bees and it was a pretty straightforward removal. Beekeeping gear is big and bulky and it has to be to protect you from getting stung, but it can also get in the way and make it harder to move, see, and grab things with the precision you need when working with such small creatures. And I actually find it very relaxing to work with bees. Whatever you're thinking about or whatever is on your mind melts away the second you enter a beehive. All of your focus, energy, and attention has to go to the bees to keep you and them safe. And bee removals like this are my favorite thing to do as a beekeeper. 
They let me see how bees build and manage their hives without any human interference or without humans making decisions for them. Here you can see me gently move a cluster of bees with my hive tool to see if the queen is underneath. She wasn't there, but you always have to be on the lookout for her. Finding the queen bee is the key to any successful bee removal. This is because the bees are loyal to their queen and they'll follow her wherever she goes. But I didn't think I had the queen yet, so I kept on removing comb. Beekeeping takes a lot of patience and you can't rush the bees or the removal process. Above all else, you have to learn to listen to the bees. I knew I was getting close to the end of the hive. As I was removing some of the last pieces of comb, I ran into the flushing mechanism of the toilet, but the bees had built it right into the blueprint for their home, and they had actually built comb off of it. Here's what that looked like from my view, and you can see how close I am to the end here. I peeled the piece of comb off the flushing mechanism and it was loaded with vibrant yellow and orange pollen. After I removed all of the comb, there were still a ton of bees in the toilet and I had to search through them to find the queen. I started to scoop some bees off the sides of the tank, but I didn't have to do that for long as suddenly I spotted the queen crawling up the side of the tank surrounded by her attendant bees. Here's a better shot of her in the queen clip, which is designed to hold the queen inside since she's larger than all the other bees. You can see her crawling along the bottom of the clip here. After I set the queen in the new hive, I took a piece of plastic foundation and I made a little bee bridge from the toilet to the new hive so that the bees could walk right in. After a few minutes, it worked and the bees went marching down the bridge and into the new hive to be with their queen and their colony. They followed the scents and signals from the other bees to find their way into their new home. But there were still some bees who hadn't gotten the message yet. So to encourage the straggler bees that were still in the toilet to move along with their colony, I gave them some smoke. I used my smoker to help me get the bees to move when and where I needed them to. Bees react to the smoke the same way humans do, and they quickly move away from it. It was really beautiful to watch the bees move across that bright yellow bee bridge. I waited with them and I gave them just a bit more smoke to help them find their way to their colony. You can see here that most of the bees had moved out of the toilet, and at this point they recognized the beehive box as their new home. I waited as long as I could so that as many bees as possible would get into the new hive but also so that I would have enough daylight to get the bees settled into their new home. I slid the cover on the hive, and I gave the bees a bit longer as I packed up all of my equipment, but the sun was setting quickly. So I carefully picked up the hive, and I carried it to my truck. I loaded the hive in the back of my truck, I drove them home, and it was another great day of saving the bees.